Hey guys, back again with another review. <coughs> this time of Retro Puppet Master from 1999. Let's see if I can get it there. Is it going to adjust? Will you adjust? There you go, Retro Puppet Master. Which stars Young, uh, which stars Young Taloon. Which stars Greg Sestero, Bridget Adore, Seven Blackheart, Jack Donner, Guy Rolfe again. Well, hey! Robert Redford, Richard Bantaz, Sando Teodor, George Cannon. Now, this film, what can I say about Repo Retro Puppet Master? It's not very good. It's a letdown. It's okay as a period piece. But it's terrible in every other sense. What I mean by that is... It's rated PG-13, which is basically a 12, I think, in England. Uh, which basically means there's no gore, there's no blood, and it's just terrible. So let's get on with it. So basically, the film starts out with old Taloon, Guy Rolf, reprising the role as Taloon, and he's in a room, and he opens up the uh, trunk and basically talks to her puppets. All of them, leech woman... Blade, Pinhead, Tunneler, you know, the usual. And he says, remember one day you'll have to put me in a trunk? And they go, oh, he goes, don't worry. So then he picks up a head. And it's of an old puppy, a called, old puppy he had called Cyclops. And then he goes into a kind of, this is the story of how I got started, basically. So it goes back to, I think, 1902. And the thing is, what annoys me with the whole Taloon story is through the movies, it's changed so much. Like, he killed himself in 1939. Then it says he died in 1941. Then it says he died and then, he's, then in 1944. So it's like, what the hell's going on? I mean, there's a lot more of that to come. So basically, it starts out with Aphacel, Aphacel, uh running away through the streets and he goes down this alley and two guys chase him and go you stole the secret of life and Sutek wants it back and you never see Sutek but he's in it and basically they go you're gonna die and basically Aphacel goes Aphacel goes like this they go Ugh. And die like a mosaic goes on them when they die, kind of feel like a blur. And you're like, mm. and so he goes, Not today, and he will go and leaves. And then you see Talun Bay doing his puppet show, young Talun going to do his puppet show with his friends because that's how they earn money. And they all wear quite nice clothing. And El Elsa watches it in the crowd now. Originally Elsa was E L S A. Now it's I L S A. Yeah. So she's watching, but she doesn't say anything. She leaves, and F you see, she sees Axel basically beaten on the floor, and she goes, "Help! Help! Somebody help him!" And these three guys, who basically Sutek brought back as his slaves, all look like mummies. They look like mummies, and then they dress up in. A black hat and clothes, and they have like black nails, and they look like death. Basically, they look like zombies, but they can move and talk. They run off, and basically, Young Taloon helps him in. And there's all this thing about how they're searching for him, and how they can't find him because these drawings are put on the wall and all this other stuff. So, Young Taloon talks to him, and he basically, Absil says, I've been alive for 3,000 years. And Taloon doesn't believe him. And I think, oh, well, either. And then he goes like this. While Taloon's talking to him, ignoring him completely. And he goes, look behind you. And the puppets are like... And these are all really basic puppets. I mean, really basic puppets. And Talun's amazed. So Avzel starts teaching him the ways of life in puppets, which is completely different to all the other movies. 
So basically, hey, we find out that Ilsa is the daughter of a Swiss ambassador. Now, in the rest of the movie, she's not Swiss. She's not from Switzerland. Yeah. And basically, there's a love interest going on between them, and it's very Romeo and Juliet kind of way. It's, you know, the dad doesn't want her going near Talun, and Talun wants to be with her, and it's like, nobody cares about this, you want to see some murder. And we don't, not yet anyway. So, Talun teaches in the way, and basically, eventually, the three slaves turn up and kill all his friends. So with one of those rings with the needle in, he sticks it in the back of his friend's necks as they're dead, and then sticks it in the puppets and brings them to life. Now, that's not how it happened in the original movies. In the first movie, it goes like this. Ooh, I think, actually, I think it's the second one. Oh, on the head. And he has to say, in this one, he says these special words as well, when you're like, and there's no green fluid. And you're like, hmm. So the puppets start coming to life. And they, and unlike the others that move like this, they move like this. So they're really, like, awkward. But pinheads there. Yeah, a really rough version of pinheads there. And the drill sergeant's like the early version of uh, Tunnelr. So you're watching it, and you're like, hmm. And the slaves basically go over Ilsa. And Ilsa gets kidnapped, and then they make, and then he, by then Talun decides he wants to get a tattoo from his puppets. Yeah, they tattoo the sign, but they can't find him with on his on his arm. One of the puppets does, which is quite weird. And then they, because they can't find Talun, they make everybody in the town dream the same thing, and he dreams about, and he ends up on the latest train. And, he takes the puppets with him and he saves her and the puppets kill the other guys and then they're happily ever after together, him and Ilsa. And you're just like, oh, this movie's boring. Boring. I felt like going like this a bit. Ah. Just annoyed the living hell out of me. It's a PG-13, so when you see kills, they're like this really blurry kind of magic. It's like this magic. They're going like this, and they're going, die. And what is this? like a blur that goes over them and then dies. Like really bad special effects. I don't think there's any blood in the movie whatsoever. Even when they massacre his friends, die, die, die. What I kept saying when they were going like this was, can you feel the false? Don't underestimate the balls. What is it with 90s movies? Movies that were great in the 80s, in the 90s, they're terrible. I mean, from franchises. They go from being really good in the 80s to being terrible in the 90s. And you're like, oh. So, basically, got the young guy played Taloon, Greg Sestereo. He was great. I liked him as young Taloon. I liked Elsa. I thought she was quite attractive. But there was no sex, though. There was no, there was no, what do you call it? It was like a really old-fashioned love story uh, where they just talk. It was like a drama. How are you doing today, Elsa? Oh, I'm doing fine. I want to tell you, I, I didn't come to see the puppets. I came to see you, young Talun. And you're like, Ugh. you know, and, oh, what's his name? So Stick, the, the uh, ancient demon of a, Controls the slaves. He talks to them through their mouths, and you're like, it would have been good to actually say him. The three guys who played the slaves, Robert Raduvenu, uh, Vitali Bentas, and Stephen Blackhurt were terrible. They can't act. They can't talk. They had bad dialogue, and they were like this. Oh, we can see him. Oh, I'm gonna follow him. It was like watching the men. It was like watching Men in Black meets the Blue Brothers with bad acting. I was hoping at one point it seemed so man, but no. Awful. Guy Ralph, Guy Ralph was in it. He was great in it, but he was only in it for like 
six minutes because he was at the beginning and then at the end of the story. And at the end of the story, when he, when he uh, when it goes back to him at the end, he goes to find out what happened to Cyclops and the rest of them. That's the story for another day. And you're like, please no, not another horrible movie. Please don't make me watch another retro Puppet Master movie. Because this movie sucks. This movie's terrible. This movie bored me witless. The only thing that I liked about was Young Taloon. Whenever he was on the screen, I felt like there was charisma going on and he was great, but he was surrounded by terribleness. Why did Charles Brown make this movie? Why has he ruined the continuity of all the movies? Why does he seem to persist on changing when Taloon died? Why does he persist on changing characters' origins? But yeah, so... Oh yeah, and it's like if Harry found out the secret. In number one or two, I can't remember what one it is. He's like middle-aged with Ilsa, who's married to who he's married to. Goes in, talks to him after his failed show. Talks to the bloke, goes to him, how's that happening? And the bloke teaches him. In this, it's a young man doing a puppet show and he hasn't even met Elsa yet. So I don't like the continuity changes. I know I know that's what happens in every bloody horror movie after like eight films. But it's just annoying. I've got three more left, I think. Four more left. I've got Legacy, Axis of Evil, Axis Rising, and Puppet and the Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys left. They can't get any worse than this, surely. But you know what? I'll say it a lot. It's nowhere as bad as Hellraiser Bloodlines. Yeah. That shows you how bad that film was. But anyway. So overall. Overall, Retro Puppet Master was an experience. Because basically it goes back in time again to another like war story kind of thing you know back in those times 1902 i think it is it is 1902 goes back to then basically and you know the good thing about it is greg sesterio who plays young saloon was probably the best part of the movie i actually liked his chemistry with brigitte doll as elsa but other than that it just it was terrible it, there was, it was, had nothing, like, there was no blood. The puppets sucked because they couldn't do anything. They looked like they were even hurting the villains. The villains were like this, uh, and nothing was happening to them. Because it was a kid's film, a PG-13. It was like watching the episodes of Goosebumps, but extended with a love story. That's where it was like, sorry, not Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because at least Goosebumps came from real books, written by R.L. Stein. This, mm-mm. So, yeah, overall, it's not the best in the series. Probably one of the, it's one of the worst so far. I would say this and... I'd say this and number five, kind of... I didn't enjoy them so much. But, you know, a film's a film. I'm glad I got to watch it because I got to experience another Puppet Master story. Even if it's nowhere as good as the others. If you've been watching the series or you've watched the series, you write to yourself to watch this one, even though it's not as good as any of the others. It's worth watching because it's a Puppet Master story. You know, it reminds me a lot of Hellraiser. You know, you watch the first two and the third one. You're like, oh, not bad. And then you get to, like, Hellworld and you're like, oh, no. But you're glad you watched it anyway because it's got out of the way and you know what it's like. And that's what it's like for Puppet Retro Puppet Master, basically. So I give Retro Puppet Master a... 1.5? Because it's not a bad... I was going to say it's not a bad film. It's a terrible film. But it's watchable. If that makes sense. Because you want to know what happens. And you just want to kind of get on with it. And finish it basically. It's a bit of a chore. But I'd say watch it. So yeah it's 1.5. So thanks for watching guys. As always. Please subscribe. And take care. And, I don't know what else to say. 
It's just not that good. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye.